Alright guys, got another one. And like all the others, don't know what it is. Not sure I know where it came from either, but we'll see. Blackwell. I've heard that brand before. Interesting. Let's see. Okay, comes in a little bag. <clears throat> That's kind of cool, you know. It's probably another diver. I've been getting so many divers. Oh. That's nice. I like it. Like it a lot. All right, let's see if I can find a video. My name is Philippe Cogoli. I'm a creative director and I'm running my own design company. I always wanted to be in the creative industry. So I was very lucky I met a very gifted man. He was a jewelry master. I was able to learn all the different skills of the craftsmanship, from sketches, how to draw, for example, a ring, and then you translate these uh, wonderful sketches. New York is an urban district known for its... Wait, wait. Do you think you can do it in a New York accent unless your parents from New York? Really? Okay. Okay. New York is an urban district known for its enticing hustle and bustle, its rich history, diverse culture, and iconic landmarks are the key inspirations behind the birth of Blackwell. Mesmerized by the beauty and uniqueness of its architectural design concepts, we came up with the idea of creating distinguishable watches that embody the authentic New Yorker locality and lifestyle. Every collection brings you the creations of highly skilled artist and exceptional luxury brand designer Philippe Cagoli. He creatively reinvents towering clocks, classic museums, art deco style buildings, and literature inspired sculptures that represent art in its purest form. Combining New York City's classic architectural design with its modern day metropolitan vibe, Every wristwatch reflects the glory of the past and the glamour of the present. As New York is the city of dreams, it is the dwelling place of go-getters and achievers. Blackwell aims to be a part of every wearer's daily grind by creating striking and brilliant timepieces for men that stand out in design, engineering, and functionality. All right, guys. So first off, I will say, uh, let's just talk about this stuff. Um, Blackwell is a new, fairly new American micro brand. I think they've only been around for a couple years, maybe 2017 at the latest. Um, they've been producing a lot of sort of what they want to call in vogue watches. And it is an American micro brand. So most of their products kind of have, are influenced by, um, by the United States. This one is called the Hudson. Um, I guess, you know, waves of the Hudson River. Nice packaging. Um, you know, I, I don't know what you would normally do with most of this stuff. It's not, you know, most people don't keep boxes, whatever, but you might keep this. It's kind of nice. A uh, little bag um, and international warranty. We got it from Watch Gang. Let's see, what is it, two years? Can't really see. Where does it say? It? Yep, two years. So that uh, keeps it free from defects. Um, from the manufacturing, yada yada. That's not what you care about with the watch. Okay, so it is kind of nice. This is the Hudson, uh, particularly, I, I like it. Um, it's actually a very nice watch. It's very similar bracelet to what I'm wearing. This is a Milanese uh, that is on my, um, what the hell is this? My Creighton, Creighton. I think it's very similar. Uh, it looks identical, but it actually isn't. There's similar stuff, but mine's, you know, maybe it is. No, no, it's different. This one's also bigger. Um, 
so when you first look at this, it certainly looks nice. And I'm gonna put a zoom in of the face so that you don't have the um, my shaky hands or whatever, so you can get a nice good look at it. I'm gonna take the stuff off because I do intend to keep this. It's a nice, nice watch. Um, first thought, right, when you look at this watch from afar, you see the uh, two buttons, uh, the A and B, which are the, the typical start and stop, right? It all comes from the look originally when you had a stopwatch and it looked like this and you had the, the winder and start stop, just like the old fashioned uh, sports, sports timers. And by the way, I do have to apologize. Um, I live right across the street from a park. This new house I bought, it's very uh, sort of city-like. So I've got a front porch and I walk down my steps and immediately after coming off the steps, uh, there's a street. And then right across that, there's a park and all the kids playing and riding their bikes and doing <laughs> doing whatever. So, you know, it's what it is. So there's a lot of, if you hear kids playing and laughing, um, <laughs> that's what it is. It's kind of cool because there's always food trucks out there and, you know, it's can't ask for more. Um, anyways, this is the Hudson. You look at it and you think chronograph, but it's not. And I'm just going to go right into the style of the watch and, and what it does. So first of all, at the three o'clock location, that is the 24 hour indicator. Now I think it's like three o'clock something. So we'll put that there and you can see, I'll just make it like five o'clock. So you can see at five o'clock, you can see that it correlates. So it's a 24 hour indicator, which is nice. I mean, that's helpful, right? If you're, if you're busy and you're flying and you're doing, um, you know, or you're stuck in a server room and you've been there for so many hours or on deployment and who knows, or you live in Alaska, right? <laughs> Whatever it is. Um, but at the nine o'clock location, that is a little different. So it took me a while to figure that out. because so I was like, why isn't the chronograph working? Why isn't it going? And I was getting frustrated. So I realized, and I'll show you to set this. Um, and, and I'll put it at an angle so that you can see it. To set this, you pull out the crown to the second location and you hold down, you hold down the button and you'll see it moves ever so slightly. If you can just see that it's moving ever so slightly. So I can adjust it and that becomes a second time, which is nice. And I think you guys know how that works. Um, it doesn't exactly have a minute hand, but it allows you to be able to see effectively um, what hour it's at, and as it gets closer to the next hour, that represents how many minutes. So this would be, this would be uh, 2.30 in the morning, or 1.30 in the morning, sorry. Two o'clock in the morning, 2.30 in the morning, three o'clock in the morning, etc. So it works, works quite well like that. Kind of neat, I mean, I don't know how often you would use that in this, in a watch like this. Um, date at the six o'clock location again comes with a milanese bracelet uh, but you could also get this with uh, they had it with leather um, a leather strap as well as i saw the back is kind of neat and i'll put a, another picture of that so you can see it without all the, the nonsense on it um, so you can more appropriately see it but um, i thought it was kind of cool kind of cool design um, now it is, it is a hundred meter water resistant. Uh, and that's kind of nice, uh, because something like this, you can take, uh, you can take swimming, you can, uh, use in the shower every day. Uh, it's stylish enough that you could wear it with a suit if you were so inclined. Although most people, it's generally not recommended to wear, a, um, a flashly bracelet like this, but I'll tell you what, my dad, he wore a 1963 Omega Seamaster um, with uh, a Milanese bracelet, and he wore it every day, whether he was um, digging in a ditch or, <laughs> you know, or he was in the boardroom. And he managed uh, like over a thousand employees at one time. Uh, he managed resorts, and uh, it didn't matter if he was in the backyard digging in a ditch or wearing a suit and uh, giving orders to his employees, he was wearing his Omega Seamaster. And man, he beat that sucker up. Uh, but I restored it. 
anyway, so yeah, so you can you can wear this in any situation and it should be able to take an impact. It has a sapphire coated crystal, so it's not impact resistant, right? We've talked about that. You can drop this and it'll still crack, but I can take it like this and it will not scratch. Just to hope it didn't. Yes, it did not because <laughs> it is sapphire coated and the sapphire coating helps prevent scratching. And it's a good thing too, because this really would have jacked it up. <laughs> so I lucked out, but I do like it. It's, uh, let me clean it up a little bit because I've been touching it and I've been all handsy with it. But it is a very nice case, uh, brushed 316 stainless steel on the side, uh, polished around the bezel. And the crystal is fantastic looking. It's, it's got like a sort of a, a dish look, I really like it. It's a fantastic watch. I really like the color. And Blackwell is, is a cool American brand, although I have been able to figure out where it's manufactured. I'd have to assume it's like all the others manufactured in Hong Kong, labeled as China, um, sometimes Taiwan, some other places, and sometimes Philippines. But that's okay, you're still getting quality parts. Um, and uh, this, by no means does this seem like it is um, low in quality. Now the movement that is in here, and I'll put pictures right up there so you can see them, is I think it's a Jensen or Epson, might be a SRI, I'll, I'll put it in there, uh, VD53, I think, or 30, I can't remember, but I'll, I'll, I'll have the pictures and I'll correct it down there at the bottom. Um, good, solid, reliable movement. Um, it's gonna do what it's gonna do, and that's what it is. But I like the color combination. I don't think there's any loom but I will check that out right now. Let's take, turn the light off and see. Nope, no loom whatsoever. That's okay. Let's go ahead and do some measurements. It's a good size. I'm gonna say maybe 43, 44. Yep, 44. And I'm gonna say the width feels smaller. No, 22, okay. And the depth, I'm gonna say 14. Yep, good solid 14 at the peak. And the lug to lug, about 44 and a half. And let's check the weight. Hundred twenty-five grams. All right. Now the price. Um, again, I think I got this one. I got one of these on a wheel spin. I'll, I'll verify and put it up there at the top. But if I got this on a wheel spin, it would have been about seventy-three dollars and fifty-seven cents. Um, if I got it as a uh, monthly black, which I'm not sure that it was. I think my other one, uh, my HUD, my um, Guggenheim. I think that one was 118 so this one I do think was $73 which is is quite nice I mean you really can't go wrong $73 this is this is fantastic it's a fantastic watch I mean I love it it is it's very nice um, very similar to my Grayton I suppose in size and, and everything else uh, manufactured completely different although the bracelets seem to have some of the same features though they are a different size yeah this Grayton's a 24 but um, it, it Now, um, MSRP, as you can see here, is 250 So it's not an unreasonable MSRP. And I will tell you, um, holding this in my hand, feeling it, and looking at it, uh, this absolutely feels like a $250 watch. Um, I, it absolutely does. $250 all day long. I'd have no problems paying that if I was particularly interested in this. Now, I got this on a wheel spin. So it was kind of like, you know, for the price, I know I'm getting my money's worth, so I don't feel bad about it. And that's the same with all my watches. I never ever really uh, pay MSRP. I did for Breitling. And I will show that once, I'm still doing the video, it'll be a few weeks, but I never pay MSRP unless it's something very special. Uh, but I was very happy with this and I'm okay with what I paid and it definitely feels like a $250 watch. 
I would maybe even say 300, 325. I'd feel comfortable paying if I was so inclined. Um, all right, uh, so if you enjoyed this video, uh, please leave a like and subscribe. I really appreciate it. Uh, and leave your comments and let me know what you think. Uh, very interested in your opinions on these watches too. Um, I sometimes buy based on my own opinion, but sometimes I just buy because it looks cool because I know I'm going to get my money's, my money's worth if I go and turn around and sell it. So, all right. Thank you.